This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Family horrified after man rapes a chops girls, leaving them for dead in home attack. A 12-year-old girl and her 15-year-old sister, who were raped, stabbed, and chopped multiple times in a pre-dawn attack at their home just over a week ago, are recovering in hospital while their family ponders their next move. They accused the man who residents believes is in his 30s and reportedly had a violent history, is said to be well known in the community, the name of which the news is withholding to protect the victim's identities. The suspect's relatives have also reportedly removed themselves from the area out of fear of reprisal. When the news team visited the Tenza community on Monday, residents were still fuming. They lamented the significant trauma the incident had caused, leaving a stigma on their neighborhood. Them thing they no go on round here. We sorry so them never hold him or else a different thing we not come for investigate, one resident expressed. The incident reportedly occurred sometime after 5 a.m. on September 30, as the girls were asleep at the home to which they had relocated after their mother was killed execution style a few years ago. The girls were in the care and custody of their 23-year-old sister. I went to get a lunch money for them. It was a little after 5 in the morning. I was to get it the night before. She told the news yesterday, adding that she is now fearful of returning to the premises. Yesterday, the window blades, which had reportedly been removed by the attacker to gain entry into the dwelling, were still displaced. Adessa him go in pan them from, one resident pointed out, when the news made the trek to the ill-fated home. The sister is calling on police investigators to prioritize the case. I'm just trying to do the best for the girls then because they're only accepting me to come and visit them, she said. The smallest one have the tube to her chest still. The 15-year-old, she's doing fine. She's walking and talking, but she still have the bruise them, so she have an x-ray to do with the chop wounds. Them get chopping at them head and them hand. The little one lungs was punctured, she said, detailing the injuries. She is hoping the girls will also get counseling as they recover from the dreadful ordeal, adding, the younger one don't want any male doctors around her. Honestly, me no know what you say. At the first something like this happen, one did serious more than the other, a neighbor disclosed. The big one, she get two chop in her head, 15 stitches, and she get 20 stitches in her face. Her hand them chop up. The 12 year old, she get stabbed mostly and chop. Him use a screwdriver and stab up she. A neighbor close to the family added, telling the news that she is also traumatized. The girl's aunt told the news that the family is hurting, having also suffered the multiple deaths of relatives in the last three years. Them in the hospital now, but when them come, we are going to take them out of the area. We now make them stay here. The big one is doing well, but to see the small one, she wake up now and she answer when we are talked to her. She was constantly having blackouts and they ran some tests, and it turned out she have sugar. The aunt disclosed. We just a try be strong. Me have two other kids, so me can't too put it on my head. We a try cope, she added. Me afraid too. The place not going good, said the grand aunt. Other female residents of the area are now fearful as the attacker remains at large. Up to October 1, some 303 rapes have been reported across the island for this year, a 13% decline from the 349 recorded for the corresponding period in 2021. Head of the Center for the Investigation of Sexual Offenses and the Child Abuse, Senior Superintendent Maldria Jones-Williams, told the news that the matter was under investigation. Cobbs allegedly found the Linstead housebreaker hiding under bed. 25-year-old Romario Parker of Cheesefield District in Linstead, St. Catherine, has been charged with housebreaking and larceny following an incident in his community on Sunday, October 2, 2022. Reports from the police are that about 7 p.m., a resident contacted the police and reported that a house in the community was being broken into. The police responded and, upon investigating, saw that the house had been ransacked. Further checks were made and Parker was reportedly found under a bed inside the house. He was arrested and was officially charged on Thursday, October 6. His court date is being arranged. Planned outages for October 11. Jamaica Public Service has announced several maintenance-related power outages for Monday, October 10 
and the Tuesday, October 11, in sections of at least the seven parishes. The Light and the Power Company gave notice in a series of tweets on Twitter. The areas to be impacted on Tuesday, October 11, are Institution Drive to Wilton to include Horizon Park, Olive Park, Braze River, and Elam in St. Elizabeth from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Hodges Land also in St. Elizabeth from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Orange Bay to Negril Cabin in Hanover from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Dev Land to Moreland Hill in Westmoreland from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uenden Avenue in St. Andrew from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. St. Fates District also in St. Andrew from 10 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Emerald Road Retreat Housing Scheme in St. Thomas from 9.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Hanbury Hill in Manchester from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And Bethel Street also in Manchester from 9.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. NWU rebukes a PICA for suspending workers without a due process. The National Workers' Union has accused the Passport Immigration Citizenship Agency of prolonging an unethical practice of suspending a number of employees without a disciplinary hearings, calling it unfair and unjust. In a news interview on Monday, NWU General Secretary Granville Valentine said it is time that the agency brings the fairness and the transparency to the table, noting that the PICA cannot continue to punish workers before hearings. No system of justice operates like that. If we are treating our professionals in this manner, while paying them meager wages with very few benefits, and they are doing significant work at our borders, it cannot be Valentine asserted. At the same time, adding that where a worker has committed a breach, the outline the processes must be followed in arriving at a penalty. You can't treat workers in this manner of secrecy, in silence, in darkness, and they just get a letter. No management can be that powerful. No government can be that powerful. Nobody can be that powerful. The workers have a right, he argued. His comments come days after the news reported on Saturday that Pika had interdicted an immigration investigator for two years at 50% of his salary without a disciplinary hearing. The worker had claimed that he was unfairly suspended nine days after reporting that two Italian passports he had in his possession were stolen while he made his way home from work in Tollgate, Clarendon. He insisted that he did not breach a protocol by having the travel documents outside of the office. They were reportedly confiscated after being fraudulently stamped. Pika had been interdicting workers without any interview, without any discussion or hearing, Valentine said. He challenged that for an interdiction to stand, there must be a hearing. The trade unionist noted that where applicable, both the complainant and the accused must be interviewed for a decision to be considered fair. The actions that are being taken against the workers are punitive measures. You must fully investigate and if there is a need, then you take action. It cannot be that you suspend me for two years and are still investigating. It is a careless approach, Valentine argued. He said that the continued practice has incensed the union. While we give cordial and respectful discussion, what is meted out to these people does not represent that type of discussion that we have at the table. This undue delay about what transpired as it relates to disputes is unfair, unjust and unethical, he said. It is time Pika moves speedily to correct this. Pika CEO Andrew Winter declined to comment on the officer's case last week, noting that the employee was facing disciplinary charges. Repeated efforts to get a comment from Joan Guy Walker, Pika's human resource director, were also unsuccessful. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.